Welkom ook aan onze nieuwe bestuursleden. Die verspreid in deze ruimte opgesteld zijn. En vooral welkom aan de drie onderdelen die vanavond deze uh, lezing en muziek koordag, hoe je dat ook mag heet, uh, gaan verzorgen. Het zijn <coughs> drie mensen die hier voor een grote instituten werken, die ook bezig zijn met onze elektronische en computermuziek. Ik ga nu ook over in het Engels, want uh, de rest van de avond zal sowieso in het Engels zijn. En we zijn wel vast een beetje aan het zijn. So, welcome. Yeah. Welcome, uh, members of the new Stein Board. Um, <coughs> Stein uh, has been working in this place for quite a few years, and we thought it was time for some changes. Um, we've been working on many projects. Uh, of which most of them have been presented in the series we have been doing here in this space or in other countries. Um, there will be a chance to ask questions after the break, and then I can answer some questions about uh, what exactly Stein's plans are and what new possibilities will be uh, for people that want to apply <coughs> to work here at Stein. But right now, first, it's important to introduce three members of the Stein Board who are working themselves in the field as pioneers and as leaders of institutes um, that do work that is in, in approximately the same field as Stein, although luckily we can see many, many differences and changes also going on in all the institutes. And it's just to um, show how happy we are there are <laughs> that we uh, have invited them also uh, here for a few days and to talk and to see what's going on at Stein. And now we'd like to present their opinions about their institutes, their work, and maybe a little bit about Stein as well. Um, they will all, three of them, will do a short introduction of 20 minutes. After that, there will be an intermission. And after the intermission, you can ask questions. So, and even after that, there's possibility of having more drinks. <laughs> having also <laughs> having also the possibility of maybe watching more of the tapes uh, or <coughs> listen to more music in whatever combination of alcohol and culture consumed. <coughs> so on behalf of Stan, uh, I wish you a very pleasant evening with first of all uh, Simon Emerson and after that we'll have Jean-Baptiste Barriere and after that we will have Todd Mecca and they will introduce themselves. So a warm applause for Sam Lenders. Firstly I'd like to thank the Stein for their hospitality very much. It's been a very innovating uh, day and a half so far and I hope for many of the same in the future. Uh, it's very useful indeed to get to know the work of another studio. That's another statement. It's absolutely essential to get to know the work of another studio when you run one. And I think that this initiative of Stein's is very uh, much an indication of what studios throughout the world should be doing in terms of developing links. Many of them, of course, have links through their performances, through their directors knowing each other, through international computer music conferences and the like. To take, take a direct interest and a direct hand in possible policy developments is very stimulating for one's own uh, views, and I look forward very much to the uh, times I will be across here. So thank you very much for inviting me. Um, as for what the three of us are going to talk about tonight, well, we were discussing it earlier this evening. Uh, in the sense we've got all of us, I think all three of us, too much to say, uh, so we're going to have to keep to uh, some sort of uh, order. I want to put forward perhaps the, uh, I don't prejudge my two co-workers here, but a simple view. I am very interested in the whole idea of uh, composition pedagogy, the whole idea of how you teach composers at all. In Britain, due to the various constraints that we've worked under in the last 20 years or so, we have not had enormous resources in electronic music, but in fact it has thrown up an enormous culture electronic music in Britain, it's been very much based upon performance, which is 
the great name of this time, which has always had a strong performance element. And in Britain, we have developed an association now called Sonic Arts Network, of which City University, where I work, is one member, a founder member. And there are many other centers in the United Kingdom which now contribute to this network. And the idea of groups working together is something that I want to develop as a theme. I don't actually believe that composers can educate themselves completely on their own. I think that especially with the new technology that's available, we need to share a lot more and we need to make sure that the things we experience are often experienced as groups. Although we will take probably the final decisions as individuals, we should do this within a collective environment that shares certain ideals. Uh, that being be stylistically limiting, we can in fact have groups of composers that work within a very formal framework. And at City, we have attempted a particular tightrope, which has been uh, very difficult in a sense to walk. And it's one which I'm very happy has been walked quite successfully in 10 years. And it's between the two approaches to uh, electronic music, which you might call signal processing and event processing. That is, signal processing, the idea of sounds of very complex kinds, and the idea of event processing, which you're more interested in where those sounds are placed and how those combinations actually work. The reasons for this interest are very pragmatic. Uh, we want to confront the present generation of technology and ask it questions which it's not really designed for. And what I've attempted to do at City in 10 years is to train composers first and foremost to use the technology in unexpected ways. This was confirmed by Yamaha recently. We placed two of our students in jobs in Yamaha Research and Development in London. And they actually said the reason that we set this up in London, which isn't in fact a high sales area in many other parts of the world, was because the British actually always used the machinery upside down, wrong way around, without the manual, and they've forgotten everything. But actually, they know really what they're trying to do. And it's something I think we have in common with many Dutch people. An experimental spirit, in other words, that doesn't actually conform to the rules. Uh, the British have an unfortunate habit of outwardly conforming to the rules, but that's a separate discussion. It's not true. Um, so, in our studio in 1978-79, it was based upon analog tape recorders. And I suppose um, the first high-tech instrument that we installed was uh, through uh, Peter Gabriel, who started importing the Fairlight into the United Kingdom, I think in about 1980-81. And City was the first uh, university, at least, to buy a Fairlight. And literally, we bought about the third or fourth one that reached the United Kingdom, probably in Europe at that time. And immediately, we were putting into use the Peter Gabriel, well, he was experimenting enough that we were wanting to move somewhat further in two areas. Firstly, those of you who remember those days will remember that eight times half a second of, of something was really quite extraordinary in 1981. And I could contrast two pieces that uh, were done in that period. Now, I didn't actually test the uh, CD before we started, but if I take a work, for example, like uh, uh, Javier Alvarez's uh, Pavlotov, this was a work he did for piano and tape in 84-85, uh, and his ideas of rhythmic combination with the idea of sampling. Again, that tightrope between wanting to create a sound world which was interesting, that thrill of being dancing, in uh, three bar time, and then changing immediately into two bar time, and then back into a three bar time, and the thrill of always being on the edge of changing a particular rhythm. That's the Are you sure it's the right CD in there? It's the right CD in there, but I've not tested it. It's not the right CD in there. Ah. <laughs> 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 and there was a CD there in, in there already, and I think it was something. <laughs>
Um, the wonderful pianist Philip Mead there was great. The British pianist who has commissioned so many of the contemporary uh, piano repertoire within British electronics and was finding many of the European works that have reached Britain as well. Uh, and at the same time, another completely different approach, a work which I wrote for Jay Manning in 1985, the Bourgeois Prize in 1985, in which I sampled uh, Jane's voice into the Fairlight and then used relatively traditional techniques to, com to compose a multi-layered piece. Again, I only realized five years ago <coughs> talking to Barry Truax that we'd accidentally uh, reinvented granular synthesis to get over the problem of only having half a second of sound so you just put an envelope over it and repeat it endlessly through the eight voices and then recycle the eight again. Providing you a multi-track tape recorder, you can play it. Saturation of space. I don't believe that in uh, 
any theory whatever, including Alan Fawkes, which doesn't allow music to be looked at in terms of where it is in absolute pitch space. Pitches are absolute, they're not relative. One C sharp is not the same as another. Where pitches actually occur is of the utmost importance to how we perceive music. Anyway, uh, by the mid late 1980s, our studio was beginning to get more interested in real time work. It's rather a buzz. I want to repeat something I said at the uh, Computer Music Conference this year. I personally feel very strongly that real time is not the same as live. Live means human body gesture with human muscular power. Quality, which is not necessarily limited by algorithms. In fact, I think that uh, whether it is in the future or not is still not an issue. I don't, I think there is an ethic about uh, music. I think that it is in fact to um, human beings in some form or another. And I think that the role of machines within this is absolutely crucially important. But I am not interested in the development of ideas which actually attempts to mimic or replace humans. I want them to be extended and enriched rather than replaced on the constant fact. And in that sense, I still, in our studio, we were using really very primitive equipment at the moment. It's my full intention to move our Apple Macintosh cohort over to being used for live throughout the future, and I'm in love, so that I'm now investigating better controllers and better, uh, literally better routing systems, very, very low level and simple things that simply are not worked out at present, for how you control the inputs and the outputs of things. I wrote a simple piece for Soprano last year, which um, <coughs> she said to me, look, don't do anything fancy. I want a tour of the street. And, uh, well, I mean, composers nowadays, you know, you quite like the idea of somebody touring your piece. Uh, so I said, fine, what equipment have you got? And uh, she ran through what she uh, had been work with, and they tour. And it transpires that we're talking about one Alesis quadruple and one SPX90. And I devised a system where the score is extremely detailed. He has to control the inputs at all times. He has to play the mixer, uh, and in fact I discovered that what I thought were very flexible systems turned out to be very inflexible in many ways, I thought about the, the processing area. And at the same time it has to be portable, so I'm not going to carry a computer to do the controls for me in any way, they're not just reliable as humans at the present time. So uh, this is just a simple example of squeezing as much as you can out of really very little. And uh, so far I have said it given a faultless performance very well, I think it's going
Vision will not have little is a characteristic I want our student to pursue. I think it's very important to uh, concentrate on very few things and exploit them and really find out their possibilities and not to broaden out to too many different systems. So I've invented what I call quantum leap theory of studio management. Install three absolutely identical systems and work them to death and don't promise anybody that uses them anything else at all. <laughs> then scrap them all and rebuild them. To give composers, especially I work in the universities, a pedagogical environment, there must be stability and continuity for people actually to learn how systems work. Of course, you break the rule I just did. Of course, you bring in extra bits here and there. But the core systems must exist in a stable way, run properly, have as few bugs as possible, and be worked to death. And then you get it. And I hope that we'll do this with the next generation that comes along, apparently upgrading to sound tools type systems rather than just the MIDI workstations that we now have based on uh, Mac KC30s. And um, time is running out. I've got other examples of our work. We've won several Polish prizes in recent years. I have been unbelievably lucky in having a Latin American contact. I don't know how it happened, but I mean, they didn't even communicate with one another. It's the British Council that assisted in many wonderful, terrific students uh, from uh, like Javier Juarez, Felipe Scribat, Agustin Fernandez, and who have been through the studio and have had no European hangouts about historical imperatives. And I've often told them already a few hangouts of their own, but uh, they didn't uh, show them too well, uh, except in Spanish, which I can't understand. So that's okay. <laughs> and they have really challenged the current thinking in uh, the United Kingdom in a way. And I'm very glad that the city has managed to put their point of view forward within the context of United Kingdom and indeed in Europe. That is, that the combination of thinking between event processing and signal processing has to be a, a yin yang situation. Neither or. And the idea of balancing the two, which is still not completely solved in this world, of course not, but is one of the great challenges of our time to put the two together. We're inventing systems that are too complicated, We're inventing systems that can manipulate formal articulation or even local articulation. These are the problems of the time. I hope that, in a small way, um, we've made a contribution in the United Kingdom and the City University. I put that forward as a theme for our discussion later. I think the composers need to work together to solve these problems, and I look forward to a collaboration with Stein and other studios, such as the two represented uh, in a minute, and uh, believe that we can, in fact, get together to create a contemporary music culture involving technology, which will have resilience, which will uh, survive time, only insofar as that is necessary. It may, in fact, be that we're in an age in which the survival of our music for the next 10 years is not as important as creating uh, living things that happen as we do them. Okay, that's where I'll conclude, and I'm happy to carry on.
in our institution. And our, this institution was started in 1972, and actually opening its stores in uh, 1977, because we know that it's 15 years uh, working. Um, this then is part of the Pompidou Center that you may be familiar with, um, which is a large cultural um, organization, which is including a modern art museum, a uh, center for art student design, a large public uh, library, which is uh, so extremely uh, modern and extremely uh, concerned with research techniques. And uh, it is also an exhibition um, center for contemporary uh, works, you know, for painters and sculptures. It's, uh, it's also um, um, a show place uh, for dance and theater, so when it's not needing too much um, specific um, stage design. So to come back to Yelka, uh, which is one of the departments of this organization, uh, let, let me just give some figures about uh, the account is, uh, is uh, organized. This is today about 62 permanent positions, which is including absolutely um, every kind of um, um, status from the secretary and to, to the director. It's including, uh, because of that, about 15 temporary um, um, positions of um, all sorts of um, researchers coming for a specific project for uh, uh, developers. And it's involving every year about 10 composers who are invited to realize the piece to a the commission. It's also involving about 10 compositions to so we'll be speaking more about that later. Uh, we're also um, uh, taking care of a good deal of PhD students in computer science and um, digital processing techniques, which are part of the, uh, of the different teams. And finally, uh, this is the most recent part, uh, the whole um, organization today. Uh, we are having a PhD program in music and musicology of uh, 20th century that we are hosting, and that represents uh, by now about 50 uh, students which are uh, working in the house. So um, that's for the, for the, for the staff, let's say that uh, In terms of the organization, there are in the actual structure today three departments creation, research and development, and energy. So I'll try to some of what are the uh, aims of each of these departments. Uh, world creation, which is, um, of course, the main, um, uh, the most visible um, goal of the institute, is uh, dealing with um, taking care of composers coming and uh, participating um, to a um, specific scientific project uh, of uh, different trends uh, which are designed uh, every year, or uh, more uh, strategically, uh, say um, composers coming to realize a specific uh, personal project. And we'll be speaking a little bit more about that later. So uh, the, all these composers are selected through a reading panel which is meeting uh, once in a year, which is uh, composed from uh, composers and collaborators uh, and conductors, uh, um, uh, international uh, figures uh, who are uh, ch changed every year. And we are uh, looking to about uh, 200 different propositions every year. Uh, to move rapidly to research, which is slightly more uh, complex to uh, detail, I will keep a um, very rough uh, idea of how research is organized. Uh, traditionally, acoustics has been very important in IACA. Uh, uh, as you remember, it's, it's uh, part of the name. Uh, this may seem today uh, a little bit strange. I think uh, this is really a uh, really <coughs> showing something of uh, uh, another time. I guess if uh, an institution like Kierkegaard is founded today, uh, you're more likely to, to, to find a name on computer or computer music inside of the name rather than acoustics. But that's reflecting the fact that um, during the early uh, end of the 60s when the project was designed for Kierkegaard, uh, acoustics were still concerned as physics uh, as a main uh, science that would relate music. Uh, today, obviously, uh, many computer the music centers uh, have been out. Uh, technology has made uh, uh, most of the uh, research and uh, interest. And uh, acoustic, nevertheless, in the end, stayed important for many different reasons. Uh, it's maybe the place where you can find the most basic research uh, uh, project for, uh, for um, uh, music. Despite the fact that there is so much pressure inside of an institution like it 
them to get uh, immediate or rather immediate results uh, for musical operations. So to, to give an idea about the research project, uh, well, there are mainly three different um, types of uh, project. Uh, one which is dealing with instrumental acoustics, which is mainly the study of uh, design, possibility improvement of production uh, instruments. Let's say, for instance, that uh, we want to uh, help uh, on, uh, on uh, wind instruments, the possibility to uh, uh, have a better uh, dynamics according to the, uh, to the pitch, or that you want to have uh, more tones in the group. Well, that's a typical uh, kind of project that has been handled all over the years. So, uh, another typical project was to design uh, use for the brass instruments that would be uh, flexible and uh, controllable in terms of the uh, influence on timbre. Uh, and as a part of the uh, instrumental acoustic is dealing with uh, modelizing uh, instruments, at least, uh, developing a knowledge which can be a practical use later for uh, digital screen processing. We can better help these people about that later. Uh, the second field of acoustic is room acoustic, and uh, that, that has been maybe the most basic field of research in the <coughs> over the years. And uh, after quite many years, now it's coming to uh, quite interesting package that we call the specializer, which is a set of digital signal testing tools, um, basically to modelize uh, a virtual space and uh, to put sound into the space. Uh, this is quite unfortunate. I'm not going to develop this aspect, uh, but potentially I could uh, speak about that if there are specific questions uh, later. Finally, the third type of um, timber uh, in that field, uh, a number of experiments have been put together for composers trying to uh, get a better idea about uh, how timber is perceived. Um, again, I don't have the needs tonight to speak about that, but let's move to uh, uh, the other kind of projects. One strong axis, uh, one axis which is maybe the most famous uh, in terms of the byproducts uh, of the is the uh, study of analysis and synthesis techniques. Uh, that is the uh, capacity to use a computer in developing new uh, ways of analyzing sounds or producing sounds. Well, uh, over the years, uh, IACAM has been developing uh, a series of uh, body of knowledge in that domain, which has um, come into uh, different programs. Um, one which is maybe the most famous is uh, what's called SHOW, which is the image simulation of voice. More recently, they have been strong in phases uh, on uh, physical modeling. Is, uh, using the computer to describe uh, where the sound is physically produced in terms of the, the, the questions of the sound production. And uh, that has, been, has come to a program which is called Mosaic, uh, which is a very interesting uh, device uh, to deal with simulation of uh, different types of uh, excitation and resonance uh, mechanisms. Um, that program has uh, now come to a place where it has been uh, started to be uh, distributed more about the paper. Well, um, there are a lot of issues, of course, in, uh, in this domain. Uh, uh, one of the most uh, difficult uh, uh, bias in, in, in this uh, respect is uh, the idea of working on uh, instrumental transition sounds uh, so as to be able to modernize and integrate the relations. Uh, this is clearly something which, is, which has been a strong part in ECAM because of the fact that uh, all over the years, there have been more and more composers uh, coming from, uh, let's say, traditional education, racers and uh, electroacousticians. And uh, their interest was well, where to do mixed music, music uh, which uh, we mix uh, traditional instruments and computers. And uh, in that, to achieve that purpose, they've been uh, pushing the development of techniques that would uh, give them elements to finally reach uh, to look for fusion and fusion uh, between uh, traditional instruments and uh, the new uh, sound uh, continuous. Uh, to move on, uh, one of the projects which has been taking most of the energy in the last uh, three years is actually what is called the Music Station, which is uh, both a hardware and a software project built around the, the next computer. Um, just to give a few uh, technical data for the ones who are interested, uh, the idea there is to build a um, piece of hardware, which is maybe a car, using uh, one of the uh, most powerful ships uh, around today, which is the uh, Intel uh, 860 uh, that's more or less functional, very fast, So 
this car is uh, involving two of these chips, and uh, which uh, comes up to uh, about 90 megaflops. We have different port operations. And the software package for that is mainly consisting of uh, a new implementation of the MAPS program that we are going to do, which is a different product, uh, which is known by the code, which is basically uh, um, between codes developing and building a project on the development of the technical interface. Um, so, what has been done in that context is to add uh, a series of uh, single processing modules to the Macintosh implementation. There is a series of programs uh, which are doing all these things, uh, all the traditional things we want to do uh, as we can do the forestation. Uh, but maybe the most interesting thing of that is a kind of uh, real time Linux uh, implementation which looks to take any uh, C program, any uh, program you can see, and to combine it on the cloud and uh, then to optimize it by, according to the text feed uh, by factor between time and time. So, Okay, uh, let's move to the last uh, analysis of the research, which is between quotes, edge composition. That is building uh, an environment that allows composers to work uh, mostly at home, actually, uh, to, uh, well, to compose in general, but let's say to both uh, materials that uh, could be used uh, either to produce a score or potentially also to control uh, different synthesis devices or uh, software programs. Uh, in that domain, there has been a series of projects over all the years, but the latest project is something which is called Patchwork, which is basically a communist uh, oriented uh, environment on, on Macintosh, which, is, uh, which has been designed in collaboration with uh, several uh, French composers. Um, maybe the most famous of them is Tristan Mirai. Maybe some of you agree. So, uh, this is basically a, a device which allows you to uh, both Musical structures and uh, by describing the, the generation processes to uh, filter them by constraints and to edit them in musical editors and uh, send them to a variety of uh, peripherals uh, by software that is uh, potentially the device or the finale program if you want to make an instrumental score or different formats which are to the various synthesizers, software synthesizers which are used in the program. Okay, let's come finally to the the pedagogy, which is actually the part of the short group. Uh, there has always been a pedagogy department uh, in Yaka, and has been uh, mostly known for its uh, summer um, workshop in computer music. Uh, in the recent years, we've been developing two uh, main additions to that. First, uh, a curriculum of computer music composition, which is a one year program, very intensive program, which, uh, which is in two parts. The first part, which is a nine months, very intense. Uh, period of study and practical work. Um, each week, uh, the students uh, are in uh, five, three hours lectures, all the aspects of uh, computers and music. And they have as much uh, practical work uh, on different, all, all the different environments which are available in the account with uh, the airport and systems. And after that, uh, they have a three, two to three months period of uh, realization of personal project, which come up uh, to uh, a series of sketches of all these, which is later presented in uh, the next musical season uh, in public. The second edition uh, has been a PhD program, as I mentioned, in music and musicology of the 20th century. That is a um, um, very recent program that was founded uh, about two years ago. Uh, I guess the name is uh, self sufficient. It's a, it's a program which is organized in collaboration with uh, universities. It's also a very nice program. It's mostly on the, the second part of the uh, Century, and of course, there's quite a bit of uh, what we have, especially in the first three, which is most elaborate uh, part of music today. But it's a more general approach in the business and university approach. Um, I have some leaflets about all this uh, if you keep uh, if you want for interest. I won't uh, get too much more. To finish, I'd like to have some uh, slides, please. Let me give you a short uh, that's actually the most visible part of the uh, 